Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel and this is one video out of a series of three where we're going to work on the Mini. In this video we're going to take apart the whole front wheel. So in other words we're going to take off the upright, we're going to take out the wheel hub, we're going to take out the drive shafts and then we have all these parts on a bench so we can start working on them. But in this video we will actually replace the front wheel bearings and then of course refit them. In part number two, we will start working on the ball joints. And in part number three, we will actually install the drive shafts. Now, you might have seen already one video on how you can actually remove the CV joints from the drive shaft. I am not going to repeat this in part number three, but you'll see on how we are fitting new drive shafts onto the vehicle and put it all to torque. So, without any further ado, let's start and have a look on how you can take apart the front suspension, the front uh, wheel hub, the front upright. I have already lifted up the vehicle. I took off the wheel and if you work on it, you don't need to lift it, but you can put it on the jack and make sure it's supported. And then you can start working. Now I have undone all the bolts already before just to save some time, but I want to show you the sequence on how I do this. Of course, the brake caliber is typically on the disc and there are two bolts in the back here that are holding the brake caliber into place. And these are the bolts. You can just undo them. They are bolted through these holes there on the brake caliber. And then I suspended the brake caliber on a piece of wire so that it does not strain the flex hose here. So that's a side. So that's an easy one. The next thing is of course to remove this big nut here. The nut which is holding the drive shaft in place. Now if you don't have an impact hammer to remove this nut, I recommend that you don't remove first the brake caliber, you leave the brake caliber on, have somebody in the car pressing the brakes and then use a wrench to remove this bolt or nut. Now if you have an um, impact hammer like this, then you can actually remove it even without the uh, brake caliber uh, being on the disc. Now I've done this already, uh, obviously there is a split pin through this nut which you have to remove first and then you can actually take this off. That would be the first step to do. Once you've done that, you can actually remove the disc brake or the wheel hub itself. And there we go, now that's off. My next step is typically removing the lever which is going to the steering rack. So these are just two bolts that you remove. Now some people like to remove the ball joint here and you can do this by knocking on the side but I rather do this. I think this is easier or at least for me that was easier. I'm just going to put the bolts back in so I don't lose them. All right. So now that we have that removed the next step is actually to break loose the upright and this is the upright from the actual wrist bones, although they are not really wrist bones, from the actual suspension. Now to do that, you might need a special tool which we call a ball joint splitter and it goes on like this and then you tighten this uh, bolt here and it will push open that whole ball joint. Now I've done this before so I can't show that to you anymore, but that's just normal practice of splitting a ball joint. I do recommend that you buy that tool. Some people will knock on the side or some people even knock on the top. If you knock on the top, make sure that this, the nut is all the way on the top so you don't damage the tread. I don't recommend knocking on it. The ball joint splitter works just great. Now, once you've done that, you can remove this nut and you do exactly the same thing on the bottom. All right, and now you can actually wiggle it your way out. Now remember, the shaft is still in there, the drive shaft, and you can see it sitting here. But once you got it that far, you can actually take that out, right? And now you have actually the upright in your hands, so now you can start working on that. Now, this is the drive shaft and normally you would have a gator here, but the, my gator is already off because I already have worked on it. Um, the bearing, don't mind the bearing here, that's typically sitting inside um, the upright and we'll look at that in a few seconds. And then you can actually remove the shaft from the differential. Now at the end you will also find a gator, so you might have to cut off the clips that are holding the gator in place. Now I know on a video it looks easy, but to be honest, in practice it is fairly easy as well. I do this in about 20 minutes and it's off. 
Now, of course, if everything is rusted and dirty, it might take a bit longer. But if you have the right tools, this is going very easy. Recommended tools is an impact wrench and, of course, a ball joint splitter. That really is going to help you. And those are low cost items. Anyhow, so now let's get on to the upright and start looking at the bearings. So now that we have removed the uprights, and this is what we call the upright, like this. Uh, I have one without the bearings, and this is the upright from the other side with the bearings still inside. Now we can start to look at the bearings. So what we're going to do is, first of all, have a look on how the bearings are fitted into this upright. And then uh, we'll have a look on how to remove them, and then we'll fit the new bearings. But first of all, a little bit about bearings. Bearings are coming in many different shapes and models and the bearings we're going to fit into the Mini is what we call tapered bearings and tapered bearings refers to the fact that you actually see here rollers. They are not balls but they are like cylinders and the good thing about these cylinders or tapered bearings is that they have a much bigger touch surface with the race where they are running in and this is the race so the bearing typically fits in a race and then it rotates. And now that we have a tapered bearing, the touch surface is really big and the touch surface runs around in the race. So this is a much better bearing than bearings that you would typically see with balls because balls are very pointy in terms of where they run. So the touch surface of a ball bearing is far less than the touch area of a tapered bearing and now you can ask yourself the question why do you want to go for a tapered bearing on a small little car like the Mini? And the reason for a tapered bearing on a Mini is very simple. The wheels are very small and that actually means that when the wheels are spinning they must rotate many more times than a normal wheel which is larger so for the same distance the Mini wheels have to do far more rotations than on a normal larger size wheel. And that's why the bearings are suffering. So if you have ball bearings, which on some minis are fitted, they're gonna wear out very quickly. And bearings, well, you can buy very cheap ones and you can buy very expensive bearings and you get what you pay for. And Timken is one of those brands that builds terrific bearings, tapered bearings, matched. So let me open that up and show you. And these are the bearings and as you can see they are tied together and there's a big warning that comes with it. It says basically do not mix the bearings because they are machined and what that means is that the surface of the cage of one of them is actually machined towards the race and this is the race and they are machined together so they have a perfect fit so you, we should not mix that up. That's why they're tied together. And you can actually see it because it is engraved. So let me try to give you a close-up of the engravement on that pair. And there you have the engraved number. This is a 3492. And if I turn this over, I should see the same number showing up right here, 3492. I'm going to put these nice bearings back together in the bag so they don't collect too much dust or debris. I will leave them tied together and then we use them once we start to install them. Now let me give you a little bit of a view on how these bearings are actually fitted and what comes with it in terms of seals and protection and actually the grease that you have to use. So this is our upright and we have a race and this is the race that goes in like that on the outer side and of course now we would have to press it in but typically the race is going to sit all the way up to the edge there and the wide side is facing outwards, keep that in mind, so that the bearing itself then can nicely fit into it like this. Now this is the outer side and once the bearing is in together with the race then you need to seal that up with a seal and here is the seal and the seal would go in like this and that goes in quite smoothly. Now pay attention to this seal, there is no edge or rim on this one. The other seal, which is that one, has a little rim on it, that's the one for the inner side. The one without the rim is the one for the outer side. So let's flip this over 
and have a look at the inside there, how that, how that looks like. Now this is the inner side and it's the same thing. We need to have a race that goes in there, like so. Again with the wide side facing towards the inward side and then you fit the bearing and then you need to fit a ring to lock it in place and then finally when all that is in place you fit the seal with the lip on so that seal would go in there and the reason for that lip is that we want to have an extra water protection shield that will then click onto that edge or that rim and this is how they need to be fitted in between the two bearings there is what we call a spacer so the spacer will go in there so in the middle you will have your spacer then you have the race then you have the bearing then you have this ring and then you have the seal so this is the drive shaft that will fit through the upright and just to show you one more time on how all this has been fitted together you would actually have this in sequence right so you would have this outer protection ring inside of course the upright then the seal with the edge on that would go like this then you would have that ring then you're gonna have the bearing then you have the race for the bearing then you're gonna have that spacer right and then you're gonna have again the race then you're gonna have the bearing and then finally you have the other seal on the outside so this is how all this fits together inside the upright so now we can start removing all the parts out of this upright which is still intact now I clean them up because I hate to work on dirty parts so that's always the first thing I do that's why they are a bit blank I would say I will paint them afterwards but first of all I'm gonna uh, remove the bearings and put the new ones in because I have to clamp it in a vise and if you clamp it in a vise you will damage the paint anyway. I have one on this side here which I already removed all the parts and these are all the parts that are laying here. So uh, it's not very hard, uh, you need a bit of knocking, you just need a hammer and something to drive the um, uh, races out. Not very difficult and then you can prime out of course the seal which isn't that hard either. You can do it with different ways, you can put a soft tapping screw in it, you, know, you use a screwdriver to put it up. But make sure whatever you do that you don't damage the inside. So let me show you on how I do it, maybe not the best way but that's just the way I do it. I've placed the upright on a vise and I'm just going to use a big screwdriver to put it underneath and try to prime out this seal and this comes out very easy as you could see. It may not always work that easy but this time it did. Alright and then inside you actually see the bearing. Now it has a lot of sand on it but that's just me because I've been blasting it so and these bearings I'm going to throw them away anyway because I'm going to show you later on how they actually are worn out anyhow. So, all right, that's number one. Inside, I have also the spacer. And now I can actually do the other side. So I'm going to flip it over. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. There we go. And now I can stick it underneath and prime it out. All right, so again, the bearing comes out, pretty lot of sand on it, but that's just because I've been blasting it. But remember that you can't remove the inner race without removing this clip first. And that clip can be a bit of a problem sometimes, but I tend to put a screwdriver behind it and then a small one and then I try to prime it out like that. That typically works fairly easy, as you can see. All right, so now we have the inner race, and now I'm going to clean that up a little bit because now I want to knock those out. So, from the inside, you need to knock out the outer one, and then from the outside of the upright, you need to knock out the inner race. So, not very difficult. So to drive out the outer uh, race, I'm going to use just a driver and stick it in and then start to knock it. 
little bit by little bit. But I'm going to pay attention not to damage uh, the inner parts of the upright. And I can see it already moving. So just tap around it. Oh, it's moving quite all right now. So you will see it dropping out in a second. So I'm going to keep on driving it out and then you see it drop. It's almost there. There we go. And as you could see, removing the old seals and the bearings and the races wasn't all that hard to do. Now it's a matter of cleaning it all up really well. Uh, I'm just going to take out most of the grease out of it now. And then we're going to wash it uh, because I want to have it absolutely clean before I put the new bearings in. All right. So when everything is cleaned up and everything is very smooth on the inside and also the edge should be rust free because they tend to have a bit of rust on the edges then it's time to install the race. And you can start either with the inner one or the outer one, it doesn't really matter. Now you don't need a press to put the race in, so assuming this is the new race, remember you need to put it with the widest side facing outwards, okay? So you need to pre-position it so that it kind of sits flush. And then it's always a good idea to keep the old race that you have, grind this off a bit so it's smaller, so it fits in, and use that you know, to drive it in because otherwise you're going to damage it and this way you don't. So always keep the old parts, it's always a good way to drive it in. Now I am not going to use this old part because I have a strong Teflon block which is about 60 millimeters wide which I'm going to put on there and I can knock it on. And the reason that I'm using Teflon is this is softer material than the actual race so I can never damage the race. And as you can see, this is going to go in all the way to the end. So this is a real flush fit. Now if you don't have these blocks, then okay, I can understand. You might not have this, but you can get this Teflon stuff uh, at this diameter. So this is very handy. So um, we're going to install now the first race. And here is the race out of the packet. It's a Timken race. And it's actually um, machined to each other together with the cage and I want to keep them together so this is 3492 and this is 3492. So I'm going to put this aside so I know that is this one. Now before I put it in you got to make sure everything is absolutely clean and then I'm going to put just a little bit of grease into it so it slides in nicely. Not a lot, just a little bit. And I know this is not bearing grease. This is just, you know, pretty good quality grease just to make sure it slides in nicely. Um, at the end I will certainly put proper bearing grease in but this is not the greasing purpose. This is just to make sure it's going to slide in nicely. And also we'll do a little bit on that, on the edge here, on that bearing. All right, so nothing really special. I just want to make sure it's going to go in nicely. All right, so this is nicely greased in. So I'm going to place it with the white side facing upwards. And hopefully you can see that. And now I'm going to try to kind of position it as flush as I can as my starting point, because that's important. It's already kind of tied in. All right, so this is better. And now I'm going to tap this really softly. And I want to check if this is going in flush. And it looks like this is going in flush. And this is going in very smoothly. So I'm happy about that. Now I can drive it in and you see me checking every so often because you want to check it. And that might take a little bit of hammering. There we go. And now it's in and I'm going to knock it a little bit more. And then we check it on the other side to see if it hits the um, 
separator or the edge there and I think it actually just did that you see that how close that is so it's sitting in place so that's how easy that was I'm just gonna give it one more knock just to make sure everything is absolutely correctly in place there we go and that's how easy it is to put it in not much to it is there so you can see how flush that is. Let me give you a little bit of a close-up so you can see how flush this is supposed to be with the edge here. And here that is, uh, you see it's still a bit of my grease, but this is the rim and the bearing should come all the way against the rim. There should be no space in between and this is looking quite good. So I fitted the race at the inside and the outside of the uh, upright. The same way, I just drove it in with the Teflon block it went very easy. If you clean things up perfectly, it goes smoothly. Uh, so now it's time for a bit of a greasy job. I need to pack the bearings with grease. So they have to be really well greased and you should not use just any grease. You have to get special bearing grease. And I'm lucky that these uh, bearings come with a packet of special grease. I'm going to use this grease. Uh, and you really need to pack the bearings so you don't want to see no more shiny parts. Um, it's going to take a bit of time, so I'm going to put my gloves on and start doing this and I'll show you on how I do one. I'm not going to show you both. But you might also notice that I have actually placed on the side here a piece of paper and it says inner and it says outer. And the reason for that is that I want to keep uh, the roll case or, or the bearing in line with the race. So let me start um, now packing with grease. Uh, it's kind of a dirty job. I don't like to do that. but it's got to be done. And of course, and when you're going to pack the bearing, you want to do this in a clean environment so you don't want to have no sand or debris coming in because that wouldn't be very good, would it? So I'm just going to pack it like this and squeeze it on there because this is a pack for two. I'm just going to push it, really push it in there. I'm just going to take a bit of time, guys, but it's important that this is done the right way. Let me pack a bit here on this side. Got to keep some because I don't want to run out of it because I have two of them to do. And of course, I need to flip it over and start running it a bit. Oh, and pack it. If you rotate it, then the tapered uh, or the cylinders are moving around as well. So then you can get grease all over the place and that's so important. So we packed both bearings with lots of grease and I have some grease hanging here which I need to take off. And now we place them aside again and we'll install it into the upright. All right, so this is the inner side. So I will install the inner bearing, which is this one. I'm just gonna drop that in and make sure it's nicely in position. Can't really go wrong. And then I need to install this metal ring that will just clip in place. Well, let's hope it does. And it does. Here we go. That's in now. All right. And then finally, we will have to seal it off with a seal and remember this is the seal with the edge and it's the edge should be facing upwards and then we just need to put it in like that and again here we will have to push it in very gently I have greased it a little bit on the set on the edges and that should go in very smoothly so let's see And again, you have to make sure you start off flush because otherwise it, it can be a bit tough to get it in. Uh, all right. And for that, I might actually use an old race upside down to push that in. You don't want to knock on the lip. So I just want to drive it in. And it's almost in. A little bit more on this side. Yep. All right. There we 
we go. And that is in place. Maybe just a little bit more. So it's nice and flush. And that's where it's supposed to be. One more tick. Right, and that's it. And now I can actually install the shield. Maybe it's good, but remember the shield will probably fall off anyway. So when we put the upright up, we're gonna install these. It's just a protection shield. So right now I'm gonna leave that off and have a look inside, guys, uh, how that looks like. So this is looking pretty good to me and all in place. So now uh, we'll do the other side. So for the outer one, it's exactly the same, but before we do so, don't forget to put the spacer in. And place the bearing into place. And then we just take the seal and try to pre-position it as much as we can. Gently tapping it into place with a soft hammer. And then I can probably use my nylon block to really put it in. All right, so that is in and we all set. So we have installed the bearings, we installed the seals. So now we can actually try to see if it fits on the shaft. Not very complicated. There we go. And that just fits nicely. So now the bearings are complete. We have completed one upright and this was a piece of cake to do. So everybody can do this. You don't need special tools. You just have to be a bit handy and a bit careful. And then you can fit proper bearings onto your mini. I forgot what to say one more thing. Once you put the outer uh, seal up, make sure that the lip goes nicely around uh, the bearing, that it's not on one side over it and then on the other side under it. And that's it. Um, easy stuff, right guys? So we have come to the end of this video and please comment uh, or make recommendations, whatever, because I'm always willing to learn and thank you for viewing. And in the next video, we're going to fix these uprights.